Today, I want to teach you that readers develop new insights about their books by pausing to look back on the earlier parts and asking, what is the author communicating in the ending? What parts of the book do I now see in a new light? Do any themes emerge as I reconsider? Readers, the ending of a book is the author's last chance to say what they want to say. So we should be in the habit of paying especially close attention at the ends of books so we can catch any mistakes an author might be communicating. Then we can see how those messages might shed light on earlier parts of the text. Here's a chart that might help us do the special work that happens at the end of a story. Hindsight is 2020. Readers, watch me as I try this work with patrol. First, I'll pause to think about the ending. Then I'll use the ending to help me see the rest of the story in new ways. Let's reread those ending stanzas so that they are fresh in our minds. The land has wide valleys, mountains that stretch along the far horizon, rushing brown rivers and thick green forest and war. We land. I am glad that I am alive as the heat of the day passes to the heat of the night. I write a letter to someone I love. I wonder if my enemy is writing a letter. I am so tired. I am so very tired of this war. It's a powerful and sad ending. He seems so exhausted by this war. But he's also realizing that he's stuck there even though he hates it. If I think about what kind of work the ending is doing here, I'd say it's trying to communicate a theme. Especially when the soldier says those lines, I write a letter to someone I love. I wonder if my enemy is writing a letter. Meyer seems to be explaining how enemies in war have a common humanity. Enemies in war have common humanity. Let's see if we can use this idea to reconsider the significance of earlier parts of the text. You know, as I was reading this over, I had a sense of deja vu. Something felt very familiar to me. Anyone else have that feeling like you've heard this before? What is it? What could it be? Ah, I know. This land has wide valleys, mountains that stretch along the far horizon. Those lines are from earlier in the book. I remember them. What kind of work could I do with these repeated lines? Hmm, maybe here, this last bullet. Let me see if I can connect this part to an earlier part of the text. Here's the passage I was thinking of. Now, how do these fit together? Well, they repeat, so maybe Walter Dean Myers wants us to really understand that Vietnam is beautiful. That could be part of it, but it hardly seems like enough. Let me look closer. Whoa, now I see it. Do you? The phrase land of my enemy is not included in the ending. Maybe Myers really wants us to understand that the soldier sees the Vietnamese as people, not enemies. Let me look back at my earlier jots and see how I can rethink what I had before. Yesterday, I wrote about how similar the American and Vietnamese soldiers were. This new look at the ending has me thinking I was on to something. I'm going to extend my idea. The ending makes me think that this is a story that is really about how, even in war, people are more similar than different. Enemies have a lot in common. Maybe that's the horror of war. You might know this, but be powerless to do anything about it. Let's recap my steps here.
I paused at the ending and thought through what kind of reading work I might do, especially thinking about how the ending makes me think of possible themes. Then I skimmed over the book, following the trail of the story while holding the ending in mind. Lastly, I re-examined my earlier thinking, either extending it or revising it. Now it's your turn to try this work in your books. Go back to the lesson platform for your next activity.